Well, to paraphrase Oscar Wilde, to lose one CEO can be regarded as a misfortune, but to lose two, plus a chairman, in rapid succession and billions of dollars in value looks like something far worse than carelessness for Leighton Holdings, Australia's one-time construction champion. As Neil Woolrich reports, things could get much worse with the company, still mired in bitter internal warfare and facing an uprising from its once faithful band of small shareholders. Michael Francis has been investing in Australian shares for over 50 years, riding many ups and downs. But now for the first time he's joined a class action, stung by his investment in Leighton Holdings. I think they went, went missing on the, uh, on the continuous disclosures. And I think that uh, a lot of people will be burnt. And I think we should stand up to people when they do things like that. Michael Francis has lost more than a third of his investment since he bought into Leighton late last year, although it's only one stock out of his portfolio of 25. But the principle matters that if you're taking in billions of dollars of the public's money, all the old people's savings, and, you know, you've... You can't go out there and, and say this demonstrates that and the wonderful shape something is in. For longer term investors, the pain has been even more acute. In 2007, Leighton's share price peaked at $61 but tumbled to $15 when the global financial crisis hit. After a brief rally, the company's share price has been heading down since early 2010, this time largely due to self-inflicted wounds. So I don't think all the problems are over. And I suspect, and it's, it's just my guess, but I suspect that we'll see analysts um, bringing down their forecasts for earnings expectations for Leightons over the next, um, over the next eight or, or nine months. Just this year, the company has seen a billion dollar write-off in April on three major contracts, the hasty departure of its chairman and CEO a fortnight ago after the CEO had been in the job just eight months, and ongoing tension with its major shareholder, Germany's Hockteeth, which itself has just been taken over by Spain's Grupo ACS. While all that has troubled investors, independent financial analyst Roger Montgomery says a more deep-seated issue is Leighton's capital management over the last decade. Unfortunately, what this company's done is it's it's um, it's generated about nine billion dollars of free cash flow. Oh, sorry, of cash flow from operations um, in the last ten years. But then it's gone and spent eight and a half billion dollars on plant and equipment and acquisitions. That's left it with five hundred million dollars. Uh, of free cash flow, but then they've gone and spent 2.4 billion on dividends. The man at the helm for most of that time, former long-standing chief executive Wal King, continues to figure in speculation about the company. To Wallace MacArthur King, wishing you all the best for life after Leighton. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Jack. It's I believed that Wal King had a poor relationship with Leighton's major shareholder, Hockteef, but is on much better terms with Hockteef's new owner, ACS. Now it's reported that ACS is keen to exert more control over Leighton, which could include bringing back Wal King as a consultant or even cutting the company's generous dividend policy. Um, all of that suggests to me that, um, that the Australian shareholders, whether small or large, are really patsies in the room. Uh, and the real game uh, is being played out uh, unbeknownst um, to, uh, to the media here in Australia and to our shareholders. I think there's a lot more uh, still to come. Andrew Watson from Morris Blackburn Lawyers is starting a class action against Leighton Holdings. He says the company should have revealed its losses on major projects like Victoria's desalination plant, the Brisbane Airport link and the Al Habtour Middle East joint venture much earlier than it did. Now, $1.1 billion of write-downs just simply does not happen overnight. It doesn't happen in the space of two months. In fact, we think that the write-down would have been evident to Leighton's as far back as November 2010. Part of Leighton's problems stem from its rather prominent place in the industrial relations landscape, especially the sometimes unruly field of construction. What you're seeing there is a potentially, a, um, as an outsider looking at it, a clash of cultures within the company itself, in particular over how they handle industrial relations and how they interface and, and react with their workforce. 
Ken Phillips from the Independent Contractors Association says Leighton is the architect of its own woes, caving in to an overly generous industrial relations deal on Victoria's $3 billion desalination plant. And that locked in a very low capacity of the Leighton's group to manage the job. Uh, because effectively it transferred management of a whole range of decisions over to the unions and the relationships with the unions. All of a sudden the last four weeks we've got supposedly no productivity, we've got union issues, we've got union officials walking around the project. It, it is just fabricated and it's, it's just manufactured to help these at the end of the day um, have a legal argument in 18 months time when the class action comes. And Troy Gray says there's little chance of Leighton meeting its deadline for the desalination plant, which is due to be finished next July. I personally don't believe that Leighton's have been honest with the share market and this job will overrun substantially past the 1st of July. So uh, I think there will be more right downs on this project. It is inevitable. Some fear Leighton will have to take more losses on its other troubled projects, Brisbane's Airport Link and the Al Habtua joint venture in Dubai. But even if this is the last of the write-downs, Leighton's reputation in managing risk will take years to rebuild.